How's it going guys? It's Eclipse here and welcome to a video looking back on one of the most broken premium tanks within World of Tanks, of course, revisiting the Draugen, the Swedish tier 8 medium tank with the super high damage for its tier, uh, Heshrans, which can do 480 damage per shot if you manage to penetrate, and with 212 millimeters of penetration off the top of my head, uh, yeah, that's very, very easy to do with a lot of the tanks that you'll be facing, even some of the tier 10s, as we've got in this video, will be able to get penned by those Hesh rounds. Now, the key things about the tank are, of course, the alpha damage. It also has fantastic, and I mean very, very nice, uh, standard rounds as well, having the standard APCR, which is very nice for shooting on the move, as you saw us hit that leopard there at the beginning of the game. Now with this tank you also get very very good camo and yes we can shoot at people blind as well. So there's another reason why I like this tank is because yeah because of the APCR runs definitely makes it very nice to shoot uh, enemies which are on the move which we've talked about previously. Anyway with this tank what do you want to play it like well you need to be using the camo mechanics. Uh, within the game and yeah basically making sure that you position yourself to be able to get some spotting damage because this tank can get some spotting damage believe me uh, and hopefully within this game we'll be able to showcase that obviously what you saw there was on a nice blind fire on someone that is typically usually camping by that building that is a typical position that you want to be blind firing uh, and by the term blind fire I mean you just try and shoot them uh, when they're not actually detected they're not on the screen and often you'll be able to get a damaging hit if you do pre-aim the right position obviously if you're shooting a wall no matter whether anyone's there or not you're probably not going to be able to hit them now with this game obviously it's a little bit difficult because we are in a tier 10 game and when you've only got 1350 hit points a couple of shots from a tier 10 tank especially if it's a heavy tank doesn't go very well for you. However when you've got the accuracy and the pinpoint nature of the Draugen you can really hit the shots on a lot of the tanks that you'll be facing and so it doesn't become too much of a problem with this one. And considering it's a tier 8 I just don't really get how this tank has any negatives for its tier you really do have pretty much everything you don't get armor let's not beat around the bush however if people auto aim you because of the angling of the armor often you can actually bounce around because the auto aim kind of angle hits one of the most angled plates of the dragon and therefore you end up actually bouncing a few rounds here and there now as we've been talking about Fantastic at trying to shoot people on the move. Obviously, for those of you that don't know, if you're trying to hit people that are on the move, what you want to do is make sure that you're aiming in front of them as we're doing with this leopard here. Unfortunately, we don't manage to hit him. You saw me get a little bit annoyed with myself. I aimed way too high with that one uh, to be able to hit him as he went down into a dip. However, with this, as you see, just aim slight in front of him and unfortunately it goes into the ground in front of us. But not the best display of what I'm trying to show you. But yeah, the pr principle is still there where, you know, you want to be making sure that you're aiming in front of the people that you're trying to go for. We do have two pretty annoying tanks to be able to try and deal with in just a second. And that is the 60 TPs who are now pushing up the flank. However, with a nice clean round straight into the left hand side of the upper plate, non angled towards us means that we can go straight through it. And when you've got a tank like the T55A that's deciding to come up, yeah, it's not very nice for him. Leopard one there making a pretty terrible play, to be honest with you. You shouldn't ever poke over a ridge where you know the whole of the enemy team are for the sake of one damaging hit. Yes, he may have been able to deal damage to me, but at the end of the day, he will never be dealing any more damage within that game because he's no longer there. Anyway... Regardless of that, from this position we do not have much of an option in terms of trying to do anything because, you know, if we move up we have, we're basically a one shot for the 60 TPs as well as being uh, fairly low hit points to be able to get taken out by any of the other tanks within the game. So it's very, very difficult for us to do very much. You see we're getting a little bit of assistance there, 1,084 assistance total. We try and put a round into the object 752 lower plate, but it doesn't quite go quite as we planned. And we get hit by the object 140 over there, which is annoying, uh, but you know, it's not that much of a big deal. 
What we've got to focus on now with our team scavenging the last droplets of hit points on all of the tanks surrounding us is we're now going to try and get the last remaining hit points or at least track this E100 to get some assistance damage on top. However, we don't manage to do that, but yeah, with the tank being so, so good and so accurate, you can pretty much guarantee that you will be able to hit a lot of these weak points. If you do, it's just a case of because the standard rounds are standard rounds effectively and you don't get premium penetration rounds within the Draugon, when you're coming up against really heavily thick armoured tanks like the E100, it does become a little bit of a struggle to be able to consistently go through them and therefore, yeah, it's a little bit painful in times like this. However, when you do have... And the accuracy, once again, like we talked about, you can pinpoint the tanks that you can pen reliably and boy do you actually manage to hit them 90% of the time as you see us looking at the object for 30, 140 there. We hit him straight in the side and that's him out of the game. We picked up a nice damage result, you know, it's not a massive game but considering this is a tier 10 game, yeah, we managed to pick up a decent amount of XP and therefore, you know, a very nice one for YouTube. We can stick that on there. And although we didn't come top, coming second to the STRVK here, we did pick up 4,400 combined damage, which isn't bad. And we did manage to come second on the team. Very nice result. Very good play to the STRVK on our team. And let's jump into the next one. The next gameplay that we can have a look at is, of course, on port. One of the nicer maps, I guess, for the Dragon because it is quite a small map where you can use the ridge lines within the central position on port. And therefore, you know, when you have gun depression, that's the area that you do want to be going to uh, within port. And therefore, yeah, we're going to utilize that within this game. However, what we will do is make sure that we do then move around the map because obviously map positioning is a key thing within the game that you need to be doing uh, just because you take your tank to the position where it's likely going to be the best, uh, at least for your tank at the beginning of the game. Sometimes the position can be become ineffective or whatever it may be. Uh, yeah, you need to be sure that you are moving around the map. And this is the exact position that I like to go in in the start of the game because we can pick up early damage and that is exactly what we've just managed to do. And when you get the side of the Chi Ri there, no complaints really. 790 damage super, super quick within this game. Uh, and that's where the Dragon really does show it, showcase how good it is, is where you can pick up this damage so quickly uh, and being so accurate and also being able to uh, potentially increase the damage output of your tank significantly if you load those Hesh rounds. Yeah, it definitely becomes much, much more fun. Uh, and therefore, I think it just has that damage potential and the potential to play really well, being able to focus on which uh, rounds you want to do, which rounds you think are going to benefit the tank. It just gives you a little bit of extra thought within the game. And that's something I always like. There's no complaints there from me. Uh, we do go for the final hit on the batch at 12T there. Unfortunately, he went through the middle of the map in a light tank, not something you should be doing on port, a terrible idea. What you want to do on port if you're playing a light tank, unlike that bloke, uh, you want to make sure that you stay alive till the end of the game and then you can just run riot around a lot of the heavies that will have succeeded. Uh, a lot of the mediums tend to get taken out within port. I think that that's just a, a kind of a traditional thing that happens within this game. I think it isn't particularly the best for medium tanks, especially if you get the wrong spawn, which is of course the enemy spawn, uh, because this side gets the uh, the ability to use those uh, ridge lines that we're currently using, uh, whereas the other side doesn't. And so yeah, it becomes more of a heavy fight, uh, and typically tanks with armor tend to do the best on this map. Now, granted, we've not got any armor, but we still managed to pick up 1,900 damage already within this game. It's not a bad one. And it's still 9 to 9, so we're not drastically winning this one. We're certainly not going to be able to suddenly uh, come out of nowhere and win it. Uh, but what we will do is pick up the final damaging hit on the Chrysler. We're not going to go around that corner because we don't know what is sitting there waiting for us to do that. And we're just going to play a little bit more passively at this point in time. Obviously, we need to make sure that we're spotting anyone that could potentially be a threat to us. We have 1350 hit points with the Dragon, which isn't awful, but it's certainly enough to mean that you get you can potentially get three shot by any tank with 400 alpha if they high roll just slightly. And three shots is not a lot within World of Tanks to take in any of your tanks that you'll be playing. 
Now, regardless of that, what we need to do is be the forefront. We need to spot and we need to do damage to the people that are advancing into our base. And using this position here, you can see underneath the railway tracks, which is always good, unfortunately, what that CS was doing was actually on the other side of the track. And so, yeah, we weren't able to get a nice shot. However, you won't get a better opportunity than the side of the AMX 5100 loading your Hesh rounds with that flat boxy armor that you can pen almost every single time within the game and you see us loading our hesh runs here how much can we do 525 <laughs> oh i love this tank such a broken one it really does have the kick and the power to just really uh, come into your opponents and just yeah plow your round straight through the frontal armor since the penetration isn't bad in a tier 8 matchup it's pretty much like firing standard rounds yeah it's very nice however when you're coming up against space armor or tracks it doesn't work very well and you want to be aiming and doing not like I'm doing right here and aim for the tracks, uh, aim for the turret or the side of the turret if you can possibly do that and you see here bad aim again 143 we should have just been loading these standard rounds and we would have already been up to 4k damage doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do that within this game and still loading those hesh rounds with just plowing rounds into the tracks very very bad misplay within this game but hopefully someone will finish off this dragon right here and help us out uh, and yes someone did but unfortunately we just fired as we did now what we've got to do because we've got to get round the Audas now we're going to get round him use him as a little bit of cover put one round into him the CS then crashes into him which is fortunate and we are now in a position where we don't really have to go around the corner but 3800 damage can we make the 4k damage mark no we can't as he snaps around into the track of our tank i wasn't expecting him to actually be able to put one round into us but it is very much curtains for the cs52 as the chrysler k just face hugs him to death and 3820 damage 471 assistance in a very very quick round of world of tanks certainly nothing you'll be disappointed with uh, and that's what the dragon offers you it's a very much a all-round tank you can go super aggressive within the game or you can go a little bit more passive you can play uh, more camo and typically the dragon performs better when you do use the camouflage of the tank when you're in a map like that though you can't really do that and so using the hesh rounds getting up close and personal and putting rounds straight into the weak points of the tanks not against the side armor of the dragon there <laughs> dealing only 100 damage in like three shots in a row yeah Lens when you need to load the AP rounds of the tank to be able to deal more damage overall considering you don't then have the potential to bounce so there you go the dragon revisited within world of tanks did you enjoy this video if you did make sure to hit that like button subscribe for more world of tanks gameplay update news and all sorts regarding world of tanks console and if you want to check out the latest update news and some of the horrific news that wargaming have given into us within this latest news article by them about the fact that yeah there is essentially a gameplay mechanic which gives new players less damage taken so they will essentially survive longer within the battle just simply because they have played less than a thousand battles within the game roughly don't know the specifics of it but a new player will be taking less damage within the game yeah don't like that whatsoever if you do have any comments, make sure to leave those in the comment section down below. And if you have any questions regarding the Draugen and the equipment setup that you want to be using, then of course leave those in the comment section. And I hope you'll join me for one of these videos very soon. Goodbye.